Nidhogg was a very clever indie game that pretty much took most of YouTube Let's Players by storm when it originally came out back in 2014. The game would put players against each other in the strategic competitive game of sword fencing, switch between high, mid, and low tier sword swings while trying to parry away enemy attacks. It was a very fun couch co-op game that has now gotten a sequel three years later. Nidhogg 2 brings back all of that action and fun, improving upon a good chunk of the gameplay and bringing some controversial changes to the visuals. The familiar and adrenaline rushing fencing gameplay is back from the original game. Once again, you and the enemy are constantly fighting each other in a rush to take over the main screen. The winning player is marked at the top of the game with an arrow that shows who's in dominance at the moment. Your goal is to keep killing your enemy while pushing towards the end of the stage until a giant monster comes down and eats you. Yeah, that's a bit weird to describe as I'm sitting here at my desk writing this review, but it's a ton of fun. There's a lot of moments of frustration, adrenaline, and in general, just chaotic fun. Nidhogg 2 brings some new weapons into the mix. There's now variations on swords and even a brand new bow and arrow weapon that's personally not my favorite new choice. The newly added swords aren't just cosmetic changes though. They all act differently and have different attributes to them that add a new layer of strategy into the mix. A dagger for example is short but it cuts through the air really quickly making for good jabs and great sword throws. The bronze sword is strong and heavy so it's a slow moving swing but it can easily knock out the weapon your enemy is holding. Melee combat is back as well so if you're out of a weapon you can easily just dive kick or trip an enemy with your legs and quickly stop on their face for a last second kill. I will say I sort of missed the neck snap animation from the original game but the stop animation is still pretty brutal, especially with the newly added visuals. The fun and chaos of Nidhogg 2 comes from playing with friends both online or locally. For multiplayer you can randomly matchmake with players online in either ranked or unranked matches in different variations of distances from your location. You can also invite friends who have a copy of the game on Steam to play in your own private matches. If you have a bunch of friends over, you can even set up a tournament to play through everybody and determine who is the best fencer out of all of you. As for offline content, you can play against a computer AI in the arcade mode. The arcade mode puts you through 10 levels against enemies that get progressively more challenging over time. Luckily the computer AI acts as some pretty good opponents, so the arcade mode actually works as a really good warm-up session if you want to play with humans later. In general, gameplay is very solid and a welcome improvement from the original game. But that brings us to the elephant in the room, the visuals. The developers made the choice to make a radical new change to the visuals, going from Atari-like graphics to something more like customizable Muppet characters. I'm personally not a big fan of these new characters, I think part of the charm of the original Nidhogg was the very simplistic graphics, so now that the game looks like Muppets cross Mortal Kombat violence, it's a bit jarring to me. I personally just don't like the way the characters look, but that's completely a personal preference. My main problem with the visuals are actually the background elements and the particle elements. The new stages look absolutely beautiful with all the crazy particle effects going on in the game, but it's also very distracting. There are many times where the characters will start to blend in with the background elements and that can be a pretty big problem when you're trying to play with other players online or locally. Overall, Nidhogg 2 is an absurd amount of fun when you're playing with friends either online or locally. The chaotic fun that comes out of this game definitely makes it one of the best games to chill out with when your friends come over. When you're playing offline, the amount of content there is pretty short, being just the arcade mode, but it definitely makes for a pretty good warm-up. My main problem with the game is the distracting looking visuals that can get a bit too flashy at times. With that said, if you're a fan of the original game, the $15 sequel seems like a pretty worthy purchase. However, if this is your first introduction to the series, you might want to check out the original game first, and if you don't plan on playing with your friends often, this is a much harder sell, especially since part of the fun is the atmosphere of playing with your friends either locally or online. That's my review of Nidhogg 2, it cost $15 and it's out on August 15th, 2017. If you have any questions about the game, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below or just hit me up on Instagram and Twitter. If you enjoy content like this on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, then consider subscribing for more videos just like this. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.